Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. People are signing in, so we're going to take a moment or two to allow that to continue. We don't want anybody to miss anything. So while we're waiting, uh, what I would like to do is just make sure that you can see and hear. You should see blue and red writing on the screen and hear my voice. Uh, I'm getting yeses in the question box already, so if you can hear and see everything and you can see the mouse moving and so on, if you could give me a Y in the question box. Excellent, excellent, that's great, thank you. So just while people are logging in before we get started properly, let me just explain what we'll be doing. We're going to take about an hour, hopefully a little bit less than that, because we know everybody's busy. Um, so the duration should be up to about an hour, and we're going to go through quite a bit of information. So some of it will be relatively fast, but there will be a replay. It will go out to you automatically, roughly speaking, an hour or so after we finish. So you'll get a hold of the replay if you need to watch anything again. So we do like questions, so please don't be shy. But please also be patient with us, because uh, we have to stop every so often, read the questions, scroll back, and so on. So questions are very welcome. Don't be shy at all. And there's no such thing as a stupid question. Uh, we like any question, even if it seems basic to you. Ask anyway, because somebody else may wish to know what you're thinking about as well. And we'll answer them. We'll stop from time to time to do that. So we'll get started now properly. So thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about tube snooper today, which is a way to find what we call abandoned gold mines. Now, these are from YouTube, Pinterest, Wikipedia, and more. These sources allow us to find expired domains. And we're going to show you some untapped resources for those domains. They have value. Josh and I will explain why they have value. Let me just make sure Josh's audio is working. Are you there, Josh? I'm here. How are you guys doing? That, that audio is excellent. That's great. Uh, OK, so we're going to show you how to find them as well. Before we do all that, we just want to take about 90 seconds to explain why expired domains have any value. Because after all, if somebody had a good domain name, you'd probably think they'd want to look after it, right? Because I would. You would. But that's not always the case. And by the way, just so you can see some numbers here that Josh prepared earlier, some of the domains that we can find in here have hundreds of millions of views pointing back to those domains, and they are abandoned. Why do they get abandoned? Well, there's lots of reasons. In some cases, people get bored. They move on. They do other things. Some people might succeed elsewhere. They don't need to be uh, doing website stuff any longer. Uh, and if you've got a bunch of domains and you like some of them and you're do, doing uh, successful things with those, you may abandon a couple of the smaller domains that may have value to somebody else, but not necessarily to you. Here's an interesting one. Some people simply forget. Yep, they simply forget. And some of the people who forget can be quite surprising. Uh, I found this when I was looking <laughs> earlier. Um, these are just the position four, three, and two, where big name companies have forgotten to re-register or renew their domains, including Microsoft. Now, to be fair, Microsoft haven't done that since, but uh, you know, can you imagine forgetting to renew a domain as important as Hotmail and the Dallas Cowboys? So you can see it's, it's easy for people to do that. I just want to explain, though, what this means when a, a, a domain is abandoned. And I want to give you um, a kind of a, a understanding of what the point of it is. So just imagine that you've got a shop somewhere. There's a physical shop, and they're getting traffic, customers, footfall. We call that footfall. Uh, people passing by a store, going into it, it's called footfall. That's fine. But supposing for some reason the owner of that store just walks away, leaves it, abandons it, doesn't want it anymore, moves abroad, you know, whatever the reason may be. You can come along and you can take that stall legally and legitimately and ethically and put your site and your content on it. And then you can start selling what you choose on that site. So, Josh, um, I know in the emails we've sent out, we've given some examples. Um, so can we give just a few examples to people of what they might do with the domain once they find a good one? So I'm not sure if Josh is hearing me. Um, and I'm not hearing Josh. He's, let me just unmute him. So hey, the, hey the, you're unmuted now. Yeah, I can hear you now, Josh. Yeah, yeah. I'm having some kind of technical details. About 10 seconds ago, my monitors just, I have dual monitors on my system. And one of them just went out on me, so I'm kind of uh, 
half impaired here. <laughs> so uh, if you could just give me a couple yeah. minutes and I'll get my Absolutely. things. Well, right. I'll, I'll do that while you're doing that. I'll, I'll uh, go over the, the type of things people can do. And bear in mind, the emails we sent to you give quite a long list of ideas that Josh put in those emails. Well, you can put your own content on there, of course. You can put links to affiliate products that other people are selling. You can have AdSense on the sites. If you wanted to and you have a product, you can put your own product on there. It would need to match the particular niche. That's fairly obvious, but uh, you have an opportunity to monetize because when you have footfall, it's people who are going to be looking at the site. And traffic is one of the things that, well, everybody struggles to get. If there are domains that you discover that already have links that give them some juice in the search engines and in some cases traffic, then it's a ready-made storefront if you want to think of it that way. Now, doing the search for these domains, I'm going to tell you something now which most people probably wouldn't tell you if they were trying to sell something. It's actually as easy as, okay? How you find these things is easy. But if you can scale up, then it becomes not just easy, but it becomes powerful. So why don't I show you exactly how you can find these expired domains yourself? So I'm going to do that right now. So. Here's the first example. Now I'm going to stick with weight loss because weight loss is always a great one to, to do demonstrations with. So what I've done is I've logged into my Pinterest account and I've done a search for weight loss. But you can see when I put the term weight loss in, there are other terms that come up. And this is Pinterest telling me what people are searching for. That's an important point because it means people are interested in these specific keywords. Now I would actually make a note of each of these keywords and I'd work my way through each of them methodically. But I'll stick with the, the first one, which is weight loss. Now, each of these images is called a pin. And in some cases, the pin may be pointing to somebody's domain. Now, on this one, you can see it's the runningbug.co.uk. This one is goodhousekeeping.com. This one is prevention.com, and so on. And there's a lot of images, a lot of pins, and lots of different domains, as you can see. What I would do is click on the domain it will open a new window and if the domain exists and there's some content on it that particular pin is of no use to me because the domain isn't available then i check the next one i think that will be available uh, um, have content on uh, let's have a look at this one i think i checked that one earlier and just work your way through each of these and when you find a domain that isn't um, registered and doesn't have content, then you can go and see if you can register it with your favorite domain registrar. And then when you've done that, you'd go back to the next keyword, which is weight loss motivation. Same again, weight loss. Case. It's actually very simple to do, it does take time though, as you can see, but it's very, very simple because all the information is right in front of you. Now, YouTube- I'm back. Oh, great. So YouTube has the same kind of feature. So when we put in, let's just type this in. So if I take weight loss here, YouTube is now telling me what other people are searching for. So again, I would make a note of these terms and I'd work through each one of them methodically. So the results I get for weight loss, there's a lot of images here, a lot of um, thumbnails of the, the videos. You can see the number of views, when the video was posted and so on. If you go into the video, now before I do that, I, I don't know what the video will show. So if there's anything that's inappropriate i apologize in advance hopefully they'll all be okay but you know uh, so let's just have a look so this one probably should be okay i think i've seen stuff from bright side before so that's had 500,000 of uh, yeah 500,000 views let's just have a look at it and i'm going to pause it because i don't want to see the video what i really want to look at is this description here and i'm clicking on show more and i want to see if there are any domains linked to well, there is one there, but it's not, you know, not one we're going to be able to take over. Facebook and Instagram, no. Uh, Brightside, here. So this is a domain which I could click on to see if it's available. I know it's not going to be available, but let me just show you. You click on it, there's content not available. Come back, check the next video, and so on. You can do the same with Wikipedia as well. So I've done weight loss here. And if I scroll down, I can look at external domains way down at the bottom and I can have a look if any of these happen to have an expired domain 
So we're going to pause for uh, questions in a second, everyone. But that's that's essentially all you have to do. It really is simple, but it is time consuming. So it's simple, but it can be a little bit time consuming if you're going to analyze lots of domains. So is there an easier way? Well, yes, there is. And I think at this point, what we'd like to do is get straight into the live demo and show you exactly how you can scale this from checking a few domains to checking thousands. Now, I'm going to make sure, if you will bear with me, that I've actually um, hidden the expired domains. And I'm doing that because on the webinar, it wouldn't be fair to show those valuable domains to people who are not members. So those of you who are members with us, we're actually going to hide the expired domains purely for this demonstration. In your account, you will see them, of course. I know some of you have already uh, bought some domains. I checked that earlier today. But just so that non-members aren't going to be able to snatch up the good domains, we've actually uh, marked them um, and blacked them out. And I just want to check. Yeah. Yep, that's great. So essentially, there are two parts to this system. One is where you can discover domains for searches yourself, where you're choosing a keyword. And the other is where the system has already assembled a whole batch of expired domains from various sources. And we have four sources at the moment, um, and many, many thousands of domains in there, tens of thousands, in fact, that you can look through and see if they suit your needs. I'll show you very quickly how easy it is to start a job. You just click on the words new job here. You put in a description to remind you. So live demo. You put in a tag if you want to be able to search on that tag later. If you have a long list of jobs, you may forget what the live demo was about. You can put tag, tags in such as weight loss, or you could put diet plan, or whatever you happen to want to remember. And then that's created. And now I can put in keywords in here. Now, at this point, um, I just want to talk about the keywords. And Josh, I know you wanted to come in here um, because when we're searching for expired domains, there's a balance to be had between choosing just like one favorite keyword and thousands. If you put in a thousand keywords in here, it's going to run, it's going to take time. So, you know, you don't want to be doing searches for thousands of keywords. But if you put in one or two keywords, Josh, what, what's the likelihood that you're going to strike gold in two keywords? And it's not very likely. Don't be afraid to plug in, you know, 10, 20, even 50, 60, 70 keywords. Uh, it can handle it. Don't go, you know, like Eamon says, don't go overboard. And we do have restrictions in place in the back end. Uh, but you're going to have to plug some keywords in there. Don't put a couple keywords in. You don't find, you know, you don't find gold, so you quit. <laughs> We've had a couple people uh, ask for a refund. They said we say uh, they come to us and they say, you know, I put in a keyword and I didn't find a single <laughs> fire domain. Well, then more than one keyword. You, you know, that's so there's a reason why it's called mining for gold. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, so there's a couple of ways to put keywords. And if you have a keyword tool and you have a list of favorite keywords, you can put them in here. So weight loss, as many as you want on on separate lines, and so on. Or if you need some inspiration, we have a tool here, the find keywords which will actually look for terms that people are searching for. So if I put in weight loss, that's what we call the seed keyword. And then I click on search. Tube Snooper is going to find related keywords that people are actually typing in to the various search engines. And then I can choose from them. Now I'm going to let that run, but you can see the number here is going up pretty quick. 76 results, 86 results, and so on. Now, you can leave that running as long as you want. And when you've got as many as you want to sort through, you just click Stop. So on, under here, we have the list of keywords that have been discovered by Tube Snooper. All you do is look at them, choose the ones you like. So for me, weight loss journey, I quite like that. Click on this. And it's already searching for expired domains for the term weight loss journey. I can scroll down. Weight loss transformation. I like that one personally. You may not. Uh, weight loss workout, subliminal, uh, meal preparation. Okay. Now, you could put as many as these as, as you want. Now, I've just put four as an example. That's all. In real life, you'd put more than that. You might put 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever number you choose. And it's working through. It's discovering domains as it goes through. Uh, one keyword's been finished. It's now doing the other four in the queue. And when it's finished, I'll come out of here for now, um, you can then have a look at the domains that are expired and available. 
just click here and then choose the ones you like. I'm going to show you some of the jobs I did earlier. Now, when you're running a job, so that live demo I was showing you, leave this window running so that it continues searching for you. If you come out of this, it will stop searching. And then when you next go back in, it will resume searching. But if you leave this window open, you can put in another, open another tab or do some work in one of the other tabs and so on. Just leave that running with this window open so it continues to search for you. Now, down here, we have icons showing you whether it's an, a YouTube or a Pinterest um, result, little icon to show you. We have the keyword that was related to the search. And then we have a link which is clickable to the specific YouTube video or to the Pinterest pin, the image, so that you can have a look at them and see, make sure that they're not inappropriate because people sometimes use keywords and then put images and videos that are totally different. You can see the domain name here. You can click on this to open the domain name in a new tab. And you can see uh, statistics about how often the video has been viewed or how many times the image has been saved. So I'm going to show you an example one I did here earlier, which is flash guns. Uh, for this one, I put in, it's just reloading again, so it will take a few seconds. Uh, I think I put in about 15 keywords. Um, now, it happens to be my hobby photography, so the keywords were easy for me to choose. But remember, the Find Keywords tool here gives you suggestions that are actual search terms that people are keying in. So I did 18. It's uh, 18 keywords. Then it's finished. It's found hey, 2007. Amy. Yeah, go ahead. Real quick, before I forget, yeah. there's one thing that we've actually never mentioned. We've never mentioned it in an email. We didn't mention it in, in, in the last webinar. And it's it's something that, to be honest, it's 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 an option. That The reason why we haven't is because what you find are, are few and far, far between. But right to the right of Eamon's cursor there, it says no links. You can also do a search with this tool uh, for videos that come with the search queries that you plug in that don't have any links at all in the description. Now, like I said, they are kind of few and far between. Uh, you're not going to find very many, but there's the potential of really hitting a gold mine with that. If you find a video that has just tons of views and they don't even have a link in their description, just some novice, just somebody that put up a video and, you know, they're not trying to make money or they don't have a website, they have no link, you can contact them and work out a deal, you know, let me put uh, my link in the description, maybe it's an affiliate link or whatever, and we can split the revenue or something. So there's a lot of possibilities with that. So just something I wanted to at least mention again, uh, don't expect the world, but there's always the possibility of, of hitting gold with that little option right there that we've never mentioned before. Now, Josh has gone over that very quickly, but what he's just told you, that is a gold mine, and it's something where it's a, an entirely different kind of monetization strategy, but it's a very powerful one. Um, as he said, anybody who doesn't know enough to put links in their description in YouTube, if somebody offers to make money for them just by changing the description a little bit, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. So in this particular case, I've got some available domains which I can register. Now, I'm going to just see any that have good views. So this one uh, has had 123,000 views, and it's appearing a couple of times here. So that is one that I might think about um, buying. And it's to do with Flashgun, Flashgun Softbox, Flashgun Diffuser. I happen to know about that. I can write content on that. But if I didn't, I could purchase uh, an article, and then I can make a website with that domain answer the query that people have about these keywords, which is how do you use a flash uh, softbox? How do you use a diffuser? What's the best diffuser and so on? And if you think about that for a moment, that would be a perfect kind of segue into an affiliate link for those products that I'm talking about. So this example here has got a batch of uh, domain names, which I could have a look at that one. I like a great deal. Now, Look, we're showing this live on the webinar, so we know some people watching are going to go straight off and register some of these, uh, which is fine. But that one, Target Black Friday show, um, that one, Black Friday is coming around every year, so you could, you know, you could kind of change what you have on there every year. Hasn't had many views yet from that particular Pinterest image, but nonetheless, it's getting some traffic to it from that digital camera optics and so on. Uh, and by the way, once you've done this, there's nothing to stop you putting pins and, and images on Pinterest yourself. Now, in essence, that's the simple way to find 
dozens or hundreds of domains for the keywords you choose. But we also have the expired domains which are kind of pre-analyzed for you, pre-searched, and they appear in big numbers. So we've got four here. Wikipedia domains, YouTube domains, citation and local. Citation and local are new. And I think we should probably just go over these two very quickly, Josh, because they're new to uh, existing members. But citation domains are ones which essentially have some kind of an article somewhere on the web that has a, a link to that particular domain. And because there's existing content pointing to that domain in the form of an article, that we call that a citation. Local domains are currently, it's, it's only the US, but these are domains which are treated by the search engines as relevant to local areas. So it might be Dallas, it could be Florida, it could be um, you know, Arkansas, wherever. I'm going to show you these in a moment, but we'll start with Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia, by its very nature, um, doesn't have new domains every day, so the list doesn't grow as fast as the others, but it's a big list. I'm just going slowly to make sure it's blacked out. Cool, it is. Now, all the information you need to understand the statistics that show here is explained in the top and in the glossary. And we do have a help file as well, so there's a video that takes you through the whole thing. But we've got thousands of domains here, and we can look through each of these, filter them to find the ones we like, and then get more information on them if we choose to. So if I wanted to look at, let's say, anything that has a trust factor of more than 15, I can use this filter, and anything that's lower than 15 is going to disappear. Okay, so we've got some here. Great, so now I know that I've got some trust in these particular keywords, uh, sorry, domains. If I prefer, I can clear that. I can look at the number of referring domains. That's how many domains are pointing back to the expired domain. And again, I can set a filter. So let's say I want to make sure there are more than 10. I can filter out the list so it becomes more manageable for me. So now what we have is access to thousands of domains that have been pre-analyzed, but we can filter it to our needs so that we're not having to try to cope with thousands of domains. And it is important to be selective so that you have an opportunity to think about this. If you try to handle 500 domains, you're not going, nobody's going to manage it, right? So filtering is very important for doing that. Let me just clear that. Each of the columns is sortable, so you know if you wanted to look at the lowest or the highest, that's all cool. Now, the other thing we can do, and this is new uh, for those members who joined us last time, it's optional, it is chargeable by way of credits, but we can do a full analysis of a domain to see the links coming in, and that actually costs us to produce that information, which is why we use credits. Uh, you can add edit, uh, credits into your domain tools area, and then if you want to do a full analysis on this particular domain, you can do so. You would only do that on the domains you're interested in for obvious reasons. That's Wikipedia, thousands already in there. We also have a list of domains that have expired, but have a link from YouTube. And that's a very powerful link, why? Because it's from Google. Google owns YouTube. So any link from Google has some weight to it. And YouTube links in the description have that kind of um, juice because they're, they're in a Google property. Again, an explanation of what the information is and the glossary, and then columns of information where you have filters again. So if we wanted to see that the, the views, uh, the results, let's say anything over 200, we can filter to make the list more manageable and so on. Hey, Aaron. Yeah, I know uh, we've got a ton of questions. Yeah, I kind of missed uh, missed this and the Wikipedia. I just want to mention uh, yeah. any link that was linked to in Wikipedia is valuable because just by their nature, uh, Wikipedia pages tend to link to very authoritative sites. So uh, that is the primary value of the Wikipedia links that these are uh, generally speaking and most of the time uh, at some point in their in the in time when they were linked to, they they were authoritative. So it really helps you uh, give you a boost in authority from the very beginning by getting one of these expired domains from uh, Wikipedia. Yeah, it, and and this is this is the point about expired domains. They have value. Just because somebody's abandoned them doesn't mean they suddenly have no value. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry, yeah. there's there's a couple things. First off, on, on the point that you were just saying, you know, people will plug in an expired domain into Google, they won't see a result, so oh, it must be banned in Google. That's not 
the case at all. Of course, Google is going to take a domain that is, is, has expired out of their uh, index temporarily. That doesn't mean that it's lost all history of the domain and value. Secondly, Eamon, can you just kind of blow their minds by clicking that see them link right up there? 8,288 domains registered. Yeah, and let's just explain the, what that means. The users who are already in, and, and they've only been in a few weeks, have already registered over 8,000 domains that they found. By the way, uh, Meg made the comment earlier, Josh, that she's, um, I think it was today, or might, might have been yesterday, she registered a new domain quite recently um, and found that the, you know, it, it suddenly appeared again for the links and, and I think for the search engine. Um, so as soon as content goes on a site, Google realizes it's been refreshed. And then if you use the same page names as originally were on that site, you can actually emulate what was there before with your own content. So these yeah, are domains yeah. that people have, um, yeah, we, what we, I've hidden them of course, but all these domains have been registered by existing users. Look at that one. That one's had 445 million views on YouTube. That's some serious weight, right? And these views, uh, some of them will keep going up. Some of them may not. You can check that yourself. When you find the domain, look at the number of views, go back a few days later, see if the views have increased. Uh, and as long as nobody else has beaten you to it, then you know you've got a domain that's going to keep seeing some extra views. Um, if you remember, so, I did that. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and was it in our last webinar, just before the last webinar, when we launched Tube Snooper, I actually, and just, you know, take it for what it is, I'm being honest with you. Uh, I think there were three different videos that had uh, links, expired domain links in them that I had picked. Just three. I didn't get 20 of them and then just pick the three that were like this. But all three of them had more traffic the next day. And I want to say two of the three had over 500 new views since the previous day. And so uh, either an enormously huge coincidence or a lot of these are in the same boat. And I'm going to lean towards a lot of them being in the same boat. Yeah. So we've looked at Wikipedia and YouTube so far. Now the new ones are citation domains. And these have articles that point a link. Again, we've got the same kind of layout to make it easy for you. So whichever of these expired domains lists you look at, you're going to be able to work your way around them very quickly. You have the explanation at the top. Uh, then you have the ability to choose the columns of information. You can see there's extra information you can show. You may not want to see it, um, but if you want to, just check the box and you can see it. A glossary again. So we've got a whole bunch of domains in here. And again, we're blacking them out for privacy because we want members to see them, not everybody else. But we can filter by the trust, the referring domains, the links, the keywords. And we can do an analysis that gives us a list of more technical information, such as the class CIPs. I know that may confuse some people, but uh, that's useful to know how good the spread of links is, because if they were all on a single class CIP, that can look suspicious. So having that information is valuable. Uh, because that information costs us money, we do have to charge you credits for that. But if you have a keyword research tool of your own and can plug the domain in, you don't need to use the credits. You can access the domains here without the credits. Um, but if you want to do the more advanced analysis, you would need to use a credit. And you can see, look at the trust. Now, the trust here, a trust of 20, 25, 26, 24, that's a pretty good trust factor for a domain, right, Josh? I mean, these these are good numbers. Oh, yeah, them are very good. Uh, it, it takes time and it takes some really solid backlinks to get uh, a trust score up that high. And you look at the links here. I mean, this one is only, only 164 links, right? Trust scores 24. We did a webinar quite some time ago, and uh, one of the um, people who were, was on the call with us being interviewed told us that they were paying, or being quoted at least, up to about 1000 to $1,500 per link for a quality link. Can you imagine trying to buy 164 links or create them yourself? You can't do it. Nobody can. I promise we'll get to your questions, everybody, soon. But uh, we, we wanting to just show you a little bit more about this because there is. Hey, so Amen. Many... Yeah. I, I keep backtracking. I'm sorry. No I'm problem. horrible. Yep. Uh, but on the YouTube uh, tool, there is one thing that I, I believe we we failed to mention, and it's a very important point, and that is that <clears throat> the stats on that page are for that one video. But if you look here, the YouTube results. Uh, 
Well, that's well. The stats are for the top 50, uh, yeah. but the YouTube results here show a number of the number of videos that have that link in them, and that can be huge because, like, look at this one down here: 558,203 YouTube results with this domain and exact quotes being searched through YouTube. So you can find one of these, and the stats are actually much higher than it looks like. This is just the top 50 views. So it's, it could really be multiple times more. You could have many hundreds or thousands of videos with a link to that site in it. Yeah. And, and these numbers are mind blowing, frankly, you can do all this yourself. You can go and look at the views. You can see what other videos related videos might point to the same domain. It's actually simple to do. It's not a complex task, but it takes so long that the reality is most people would give up after, you know, an hour two hours three hours this is doing it for you and it means you have a wealth of options available as you can see by the fact that over 8,000 domains so far have been registered in YouTube from YouTube results by our users who've only been in about is it about a month since well, there are maybe five six weeks it has. So a couple of thousand domains a week are being found yeah. by our users and we know no. that not every user is actually active. Sorry, go ahead, Josh. Well, that brings up a point, and it's actually there. Actually, uh, is a, a question from Chris on yeah. that point. Says if everyone has the software, then wouldn't the competition for expired domains be so high that it essentially makes for diminished returns as time goes by, and more abandoned domains are taken up by others? The answer is no. And the reason why the answer is no is because every single day, every moment, every minute there are more expired domains becoming available. And that's a very, very important thing to keep in mind. And that's why we keep on finding gold nuggets with Tube Snooper. Every single day, more and more people are finding awesome domains because every day, more and more awesome do domains are becoming available. And so the answer is no, it does not. If it did, it wouldn't be worth our time to push a product that's just basically devaluing every month. It wouldn't be worth it for us. We wouldn't do it. Uh, we want to help people, and we know that there's always domains coming available. So Josh has given you the answer on the supply side. So Chris, I'm now going to give you the answer on the demand side, because I think these two things have to be considered together in context to understand why this is still so good. So there's an, a continuously growing supply. That's great. That's wonderful. But the reality is that the demand isn't every single person wanting the same thing because some people will want to look at weight loss. Some people want to look at gardening. Okay, we're going to show you some testimonials later. Corey was interested in gardening. Some people, you saw my example, are talking about specifics of flash gun and flash gun diffusers and the equipment that goes with them. Some people are looking at photography, some people looking at self-motivation, some people looking at dating sites, some people looking at, uh, you know, how to increase muscle mass. The reality is the number of keywords and keyword variations and niches and sub-niches and the number when you combine that with the, the interests of the people who are using this system, the permutations are so massive. But yes, some of you are going to be looking for the same kind of things. There will be a number of you looking for weight loss. But those keywords are, remember, you're not just using the term weight loss. You're seeing other keywords that come up. You might be looking at weight loss for teens. You might be uh, looking at summer beach body weight loss, all kinds of possibilities. Um, and so the reality is that even though there are hundreds of thousands of domains in here, that there's nothing like that many have gone and new ones are being added all the time and new sources so supply yes that keeps increasing demand doesn't increase at the same rate it's surprising and, and then you also have the fact that some people will only be able to have time to use one or two of these domains because they've got to make content or buy it write it themselves make videos whatever they're going to do um, not everybody would be able to get 50 domains today put content on them affiliate links and so on so everybody has to have that um, kind of mindset where although you have some competition within here there's not so much competition that it's going to prevent you from finding some good stuff and that's true in the the sort of more outside of this particular software as well if you're looking for domain names you have hundreds of thousands of people every day doing the same as you 
looking for great domain names for keywords that they're interested in. It doesn't stop there's anybody. Even a, you know, it's, it's, sorry, go ahead, Josh. Yeah, well, I was going to say there's even a third uh, point on that, and that is that it's just a sad fact that in internet marketing, people tend to buy tools, use them for a day or two, and then let them sit on their hard drive. And as much as I wish I could say that wasn't the case, uh, that is the case with, with every internet marketing tool. It's just, it's just the mindset of the average internet marketer. And so usage of uh, TubeSnooper in every internet marketing product is super high after launch, and then it gradually goes down. So yeah. the people who stick around and continue to use the tool, those proactive internet marketers who are really putting in the work, uh, they're going to get those good times long, those those good domains uh, long term over time. Yeah, and you know what? When you've got a tool like this, use it, and and then you know when you find some good domains, put some time into making them uh, good, and you know we'll be talking about that in in a few minutes, and actually make use of what you uncover, because it's great. You know you can find a hundred domains in five minutes, fantastic, but if you do nothing with them. If you register them and do nothing, well, that's a bit of a waste. I'm going to show you the local domains now. Now, these are US-based, and these are domains that, in the search engines, are localized results. So let me show you. Uh, let's pick one at random. I, I don't know. I like Florida. I went there recently, so I'm going to choose Florida. Um, so we've got, again, for privacy, these are being hidden because we want only the members to have access to them. So that domain at the top there with a trust of 26, pretty good, right? Um, is related to Jacksonville in Florida. Uh, four referring domains, 150 links. This one, Marco Island, real estate and uh, rental and leasing, 14 trust flow, 39 links. Now you were talking earlier, Josh, about um, saying if somebody has a YouTube video with no links, we could ask them to put in a link on the description and share some revenue with them. Now, that's a great idea. But there's also something which I think, I can't remember if you mentioned it in the email, but you did mention it to me earlier today, which is um, uh, le lock and lease. What's the phrase where you lease out um, a website to other people in the industry? You rank, rank and lease, that's the term. So if you rank this domain, for that area and that kind of industry and keyword, if you can produce leads, you can sell those leads on to people in that industry. Now, it could be plumbers, it could be real estate, real retail traders, we can see here, healthcare and social assistance. You can rank and lease. You can actually um, charge people for using your website to get hold of leads and they'd use your website if your website is ranking. So you're getting a head start with a website that already, or a domain that already has trust flow, right? Uh, Spring Hill, Tampa, Wholesale Trade, and that's just for Florida. And then you can see the others. Let's have a look. Um, California, see what we get there. Riverside, Los Angeles, Pacific Palisades, Monterey Park, accommodation and food services, okay? Real estate again. Uh, Okay, so look at this. We've got accommodation and food services, Monterey Park, San Jose, Torrance, San Francisco. So you could actually build up a, a, a sort of a blog network of accommodation and food services in these different areas and start taking over the, the local kind of niche there. Uh, I can see we're getting rank and rent, rank and rent, not rank and lease. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember the, the phrase. I apologize. Um, Rank and rent, rank and lease, whichever. Yeah, so, you know, if you can get a website ranking, you can charge people for, effectively, for putting their banner on there and getting the leads. Essentially, what you're doing is you're putting the visitors in front of some kind of service for sale. So you become the middleman. But because it's done with a website, it pretty much, you know, get the thing to rank and then talk to a few people and say, since we're number one in this particular niche, would you be interested in? First one might say no, second one might say no, third one might say yes. And we've had in the past where people have gone to local businesses and done ridiculous kind of sales just by asking. And you may be scared to do that, but you know what? The worst they can do is say no thank you. If they're not interested yeah. in more business, okay, try the next guy. 
<laughs> you know, and then the guy after that. If it takes you ten calls to find somebody who's interested, wow, that's not not what I would call difficult work. So that rank and rent or rank and lease with the local domains is is a pretty good um, kind of um, revenue yeah. stream. Now look at this. Number. Another another option for the local domains is actually to uh, find domains that are obviously that were obviously owned by businesses, which a lot of them are going to be, yes. uh, you know, local businesses, <clears throat> and actually find that business if they're still in existence. It may be that it expired because they went out, but a lot of times that's not the case. Contact them. I mean, you're going to spend, you know, what, eight, nine, ten dollars on the domain. You're not out much <clears throat> if it doesn't work. Contact them. Say, hey, <clears throat> I have this, and I, you know, maybe even put up a nice business site on it with their details on it. And offer it to them. You know, I mean, there's different ways you can go about that without wasting too much money. If you know, if the turnaround is not not good, but there are a lot of different things to think about. A lot of different opportunities to be had in this type of thing. We call that speculative site building. And when we were talking about Instant Video Wizard some months ago, we talked about something similar, where several people who had access to Instant Video Wizard uh, when it first launched made some speculative videos for local businesses just to show them what they can do. They sent the videos to these businesses and quite a few of these people had emails back saying, I love that, how much? So negotiations take place. And then several of the people who made these simple speculative videos then received a follow-up email saying, I would like two or three more, can you give me a quote? Now, if you were to do what Josh has just suggested, not only might you be able to um, either lease the, the domain back to them or possibly sell it to them, you could certainly charge them for ongoing update of the site. An average small business doesn't have the time or technical skill to keep up with a website. They want one, they know they should have one, their customers want the details. You know, how annoying is it if you're looking for information about a local business and you can't find it? So the need is there. If you can meet that need in an affordable way for them that does not take away their time from their prime business, wow, that's an entire revenue stream with oh, follow-on yeah. revenue streams. And I mean, people are willing to do it. I, yeah. I actually ran an ad, uh, I think it was about two years ago, uh, just a little Facebook ad. I live in a small town in southern Indiana. We have about 11,000 population. I ran a little Facebook ad a couple of years ago offering to build websites for people. I had about five people respond to that, and I put up a website for them. I charged a couple of them were custom, a couple of them were just templates, and each one of them I charged 50. There was one or two I charged 99, $100 a month. The others $50 a month for maintenance. So basically, they can get a hold of me anytime they want the website updated, and I'll update it for them. They have a question, they get a hold of me. I'm like their internet department. I've been getting paid by all five of those for the past two years. Without fail, I hardly ever even hear from them. All I do is host their website, and maybe every three months, one of them will get with me, say, hey, I'd like to change the hours or this or that. It's so easy, just passive income. That's yeah. really a, a, a really appealing business model to get into, just charging $50 a month for management. Actually, there's something I want to say here, and I hope people take this the right way because it's, it's meant to be um, encouraging advice, which is, you would be surprised what people will be willing to pay you for if you start thinking like a business person. And I say that because we know for a fact that the average person who is kind of, um, you know, just getting started with internet marketing or hopeful or, you know, daydreaming about it, tend to think more like the customer than they do the marketer. So when you're thinking as a customer, you know, you're, you're thinking about, what you would buy, what you pay for, and so on. And, and, and in some cases, you're assuming that other people are going to be the same as you. It's amazing how many people not only are willing to pay for services, but absolutely delighted to pay for them because it takes a headache away from them. I have my car fixed by mechanics rather than getting a book and a wrench and you know the equipment to do it myself because it's a headache if it needs fixing i go pay somebody who can do it for me and then he gives me back my keys with a car that's working i give him some money we're both happy and if he does a good job i'm delighted that he did that for me and took the money for the job so if you think more like a businessman as a marketer or businesswoman um, you'd be surprised what people will pay for 
and be delighted to pay for. So there, there are multiple revenue streams, but some of them you kind of have to think a little bit outside the box. Like Josh has just mentioned there, several ideas. They may not seem immediately obvious when you first think about it, because you'd be thinking, well, why would anybody pay me for that when it's so simple? Because people do. People do. And right now, we've shown you earlier how simple it is to check these things yourself. Well, people are paying for this product because it makes it easier for them, quicker and less work. So although you can do it free for a small payment, why not have something that does the work for you? And other people are thinking the same way as that. So you can find lots of customers this way. I do want to go to questions because we're 45 minutes into yeah. it. But before hey, we Eamon. do, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can we give them the link real quick? I know there's yeah. some people asking for it. and Yeah, so let me just get that. And I'm going to put this in the... Uh, chat box or the question box as well I think yeah I put this in both so we also uh, have another payment option we're going to announce I'm well, not going to show that now. shortly but let me just uh, okay. very quickly show one other thing by the way with the domain evaluations the ones that you've discovered yourself here or the expired domains yeah no problem you can do those but you can plug in any domain name here if you want to to evaluate those are credit based of course but if you wanted more detailed information on some domains and you can sell that service to other people if you wanted uh, so you know you can do that with the expired domains or with domains that you key in here I can't show you it running because I would have to reveal some of the domain names and as I've said they're private for members only absolutely and we're, we're very keen to do that make sure that members are protected so that was the live demo okay and at that point I think it would be good if we just see if there's any questions very quickly uh, and then we'll we'll give you the link again and so on. Um, did you see any questions we need to handle straight away, Josh? I know you've well, been answering I, them while Again, I'm, I'm horrible at uh, doing webinars. I've been answering them <laughs> yes, <laughs> and apparently with, with GoToWebinar, it makes the question disappear. Uh, so oh, okay. I don't yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. But I you guys if you want to ask again and you want it publicly or you have another question. No, it's okay. I've got them, Josh. I can see them. Oh, okay, great. Um, Okay, uh, is there a trust factor of over 50? It might be possible, we don't know. Uh, Cafel, it's, it's possible, um, it could be. Can you have a replay? Yes, a few people have been asking that. Uh, what's the cost of links, uh, sorry, of the domains when you're buying these? A normal expired domain is gonna be the normal cost, which is eight, 10, $12. So they don't have a premium on them. Uh, if they were already owned by somebody else, they might be a premium, but these are expired and available to register. Now, Meg has made a point, which I think is a great one. Uh, she looked for a domain tonight. She found one. Then she's looked on the Wayback Machine uh, and saw a whole bunch of articles which were on that site originally. But there are no copies on the Internet anywhere these days. So what that means is she can edit those articles, put them onto that new domain she's registered, and she's got in effect, almost a ready-made website for just a little bit of effort. Uh, I've done that you know, before, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, it's great. I mean, again, this is using information um, that, you know, is right in front of you. Is I this a tool a... that you install? No, this is actually running on a web browser. So you can do this with a yeah. uh, MacBook or you can do it with Windows. I think you could even use iPad. Uh, go on, Josh, you were going to say something? I put a notice uh, on my, when I did that with my site, um, because although I think it's extremely unlikely, uh there could be a legal case you know yes. there could be uh so you might want to put a little statement on there um i don't know i'm not going to give legal advice you just think about that statement just maybe some kind of a statement and a way for somebody to contact if if they did want to complain about that to where you can just you know hey i give you win let's not go <laughs> go go that route but i would say it's extremely unlikely um, and personally, I don't think there's anything morally wrong with it. It's not content. In most cases, you, you need to de determine that based on the content. But I just want to throw that out there. The, the other thing you can do, which is very, very simple and safe, is you look at the content that was on there. You look at what it was about, the keywords it was referencing, and create your own content with the same URL. So it's going to hit the same kind of keyword. But there's nothing to stop you putting fresh content, which in many cases would be a good idea anyway, but use the Wayback Machine articles to give you inspiration for what should be there. 
Now you might find when you look at those that they were badly organized, you might find they were brilliant, but you can use them as inspiration rather than a straightforward plagiarism or copy. So there are lots of ways to be safe, but Josh, Josh is quite right on that point. It's, it's something that uh, you need to be careful with. Now, here's the question, how can you get hold of this? Well, just before we uh, tell you the price and so on, I just want to go through a couple of comments from some of the users. These were early users. This is Meg that we mentioned earlier. Let me just show you the text because you can't read it there. So the, the text here, um, she's been enjoying looking through the lists. Some of the names you wouldn't find probably those domain names just by searching keyword terms. But some of these domains have high trust factors and lots of backlinks. Those are good things, remember, as we explained because they give that domain a, a boost immediately as soon as you get hold of it. So Meg found one that was available for $10, but it was previously <laughs> advertised at $3,000. Um, she also says she wonders why anyone would let them go. Well, we answered that earlier on. Some, some people get bored, some people move on. Uh, there are lots of reasons why that happens. But yeah. once they've been let go, let's take out, why leave them sitting there, you know? And she also goes on to say she's found a lot of good domain names and she's exciting to find more excited because we've got these new tools which is citations and local we showed you those a couple of minutes ago now corey he uh, he made a comment which was quite interesting so if you're wondering about the power of this here's a quick update he got himself 11 domains uh, this is a few weeks back by the way all he did was buy the domain names and redirect it to his existing websites Josh, how long does it take to redirect a domain name? About five seconds. <laughs> as long as that, five seconds. Essentially, what you do when you buy the domain name, in the registrar, there's a little button somewhere, a little field, and it says redirect to, and you put your website name. <laughs> That's it. Now, look at the bottom here. He's getting three to 5,000 extra free visitors a day. This is hilariously easy. Just think about that. How many of you don't even have 3,000 visitors a week? Can you imagine suddenly finding three to 5,000 visitors turning up to your existing website? Wow. Now he goes on to say, he was looking in the gardening, gardening niche. He found some expired websites related to that and he pointed them to his website. But here's the thing that I really want to emphasize. He sent them to an Article Builder article on his website. Article Builder, if you don't know, is one of our services that uh, creates or has predefined content that you can put onto your sites. And so he used a, an article that uh, it wasn't totally unique. We wouldn't pretend that it's the highest quality article you could ever get, but he's sending three to 5,000 extra visitors a day to that article, which has AdSense and affiliate links and so on. So let's talk about the price because I know that that's, uh, many of you will be wondering about that. Normally, the price will be 397 and that's a perpetual license so you pay once and then you can use this from then onwards it's a single payment but we're going to give you a discount at the moment we're going to let you save $200 so you'd actually pay instead of 397 that drops and the new price comes in which is $197 that's a perpetual license but it is time limited so Josh this is actually expiring tomorrow at midnight eastern time so that's the same as the time in New York for anybody who's not in the US. Um, and that's a strict time limit. Midnight tomorrow, that offer, of the $200 saving disappears. If you miss the deadline, you miss the saving. And the price will go back to 397 So you've got to take some action before then, or you will see that price increase. And look, I've got to say this because after deadlines, we always get the same thing where people come back and say, please, please, please. After midnight, it's too late. So tomorrow, that's Friday the 13th, after midnight Eastern Standard Time, it's too late, the offer's gone, the discount's gone. Just before we give you the links again, and we will talk about uh, an option on payment, I want to show you what you do after purchase. When you've made your payment, you're gonna see a page that looks something like this. It's a Zaxa page. Now, if you go to a Zaxa page and it just appears to be blank, uh, you can just refresh the page up in the top address bar but after a few seconds something like this should appear it will have your name obviously the time that you purchase right down here where it says access product here and i'm going to zoom in that for, for you zoom in on that if you click this button you will then be able to choose a username but you have to click the button 
We know that a few people have forgotten to do that in the past and then they're wondering why they don't have a login. Click this button and you will go to a page that looks like this and you choose your own username and choose your password. Now you notice there's some information here. Please don't put spaces in the passwords. Please don't put these symbols because they don't work. So choose a good password, but avoid spaces and those symbols. Choose your own username, put your password in twice, click on create account, and then you've got your login. Please make a good note of your password because we know that there are people who forget it instantly sometimes. Uh, so make a note of it somewhere uh, before you click on create account, and then you'll be able to log in immediately afterwards into Tube Snooper and start finding those great domains. Now, Josh, we've got a new option for anybody who can't find $197 uh, in one payment. So this is a split pay option, uh, and we're offering it over how many payments? Three payments, three months. Three payments. So you pay one payment now in July of $87. Then in August, a month from now, you pay another $87. And in September, you pay another $87. Josh, when do they get access to Tube Snooper if they're paying on split pay? Immediately. Absolutely immediately. On the first payment, you get access immediately. There's no waiting. We'll wait for the second and third payment. That's fine. But you get access immediately. So if you can't stretch to the, uh, the 197 single payment, you can go for the split pay and still get access immediately. You get access to all the same domains as everyone else. So you get full access instantly. So I'm going to put in the uh, links in the chat box again. And if you bear with me, I'll do that now. So in the chat box, the first link that I'm sending you is the single payment link. So I'm going to give you the split pay link next for anybody who needs to be doing that. I actually just sent an email. Oh, you've done that as well. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah, they're both in there. Yeah, so they're, they're in there plenty of times, aren't they? So, okay. So, uh, I'm just looking at the ones you put in there, Josh. They're actually, um, they're not the links, by the way. It just, it says check out. Oh, some yeah, 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 so if you know those links. So, the links I've put in at the bottom, and I'm going to give you both again. So, I'll put those in for you. Um, and by the way, these links will be in the email that comes out with the replay. So don't worry, if, you, if you're on a mobile device, you may not be able to click on these links. The first one that you're about to see now, so that uh, should be at the very bottom of the chat box for you, is the single payment $197. That's a perpetual license. The second link that I'm going to give you, and helpfully, it ends in two at the, the end, <laughs> That's the split pay. So that's three payments, 87 now, immediate access, 87 next month, and then in September, a final 87. But you get it access immediately. So those links are there. Are there any questions before we uh, complete this? Because we're actually just about to hit the one hour mark. Any questions that we need to cover before we finish? Let's have a look. Um, can I have a replay? Yes. What tool finds the backlinks that are reported here? That's done from SEMrush. Um, I'm scrolling down, so if your question hasn't been answered yet, bear with me because there's a lot to scroll through. Uh, okay. Frankie says, "I love, I love Tube Snooper. OMG! Oh my goodness." <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, well, uh, that's the kind of comments we're getting all the time. By the way, one thing I would mention is that many people are keeping um, their cards very close to their chest, the users. We know that more people are buying domains than are admitting to it in the forums, because we have a forum where you can discuss Tube Snooper. Personally, I think it's a good idea to keep your own business to yourself. Uh, it's nice, and we like, uh, we like the fact that some people have been willing to share with us, because it's great for you to hear that. But many more people are buying domains and using them than are willing to talk about them. Personally, I think that's a sensible way to behave, even though it makes our job more difficult because we can't tell you about the hundreds of people who are, are buying domains. But you've seen thousands of domains already being bought. Uh, it's not just two people buying domains, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, we see the numbers every day, uh, and they are actually kind of surprising, uh, even more surprising than we expected to begin with. 
Yeah. Uh, there's, and there's more coming available every single day. And that's what's significant. There's, yeah. there's always going to be more. Now, I've got a good question from Kutluwe. I'm sorry if I've said your name wrong, but if I do 301 redirects, would it help search engine optimization? That's a real technical question, but let me answer it this way. If you're doing the 301 redirect from the domain you've bought, this expired domain, and you're sending it to your own existing website, eventually it will help. Yes. I don't want to get into the technical reasons why, but if, if we just say that 301 tells the search engines that domain A has now permanently moved to domain B. It's a way of telling them this old domain, the expired one that you've just bought, really should you know, be moved to, to the other domain. So um, effectively, it's a redirect that says, whatever you were doing with the old expired domain search engine, please pass that same kind of love and juice over to the new domain, which is where it now lives. It's kind of like a forwarding address. If you move your, you move home, you put a mailing forwarding address. It's kind of like that. So to answer your question, yes, a 301 redirect can help if you're going to be pointing to your own existing domains. Uh, if I use this for search engine optimization, what's the best way to pass link juice? Uh, Josh has answered that directly to the person asking Samuel. Uh, build a site on that domain and then link out to your money sites contextually. Now, when we say contextually, what we mean is uh, pass links that are relevant to the topic and the content. So weight loss is one, diet plans is another as an example, uh, gardening equipment, best way to grow roses, um, best lighting techniques for beginners if it's photography. Contextually just means it makes sense for the person viewing your content who's interested in that topic. That's all it means. Uh, credits, Ian's asking about the credits. First of all, the credits don't have to be used. Um, so if you want to use credits, you only need to do that if you, let me just go back to the expired domains. If you want to do um, the more extensive research on the link profile, of a particular domain, that's when you have to use a credit. And this little icon here on the left, the I, the information, is where you get that extra information and use a credit. So if you want to use credits, uh, let me just go into the domain tools. You buy the credits from in here, and I'll show you. You can buy them in blocks of 100, 250, 500, and so on. The more you buy, then of course, the, the cheaper per credit it becomes, um, but you can see you know, you can just buy as and when you need them. But if you don't want that extra information, you don't have to use it. Uh, up until a few days ago, I think it was, or it might be a week ago, nobody had access to this kind of information anyway. And we've already seen that existing members have found some great domains and already getting traffic from it. This is an extra facility if you want to use it. So you don't have to do that. Uh, Meg's got a great question, Josh. Is it better to create a new website on an expired domain and then put in a link to my current site rather than do a 301 uh, redirect? Um, yes. That's, that's because, again, a technical question, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if 301, if, if, you, if you have one or two 301 redirects pointing to your money site, uh, you know, I, I'm not completely, I, I don't, you know, I haven't done the research here in the past few months as to what, how exactly Google looks at that. I don't know if anybody knows that other than Google. But I do know that, as Eamon said, if you have one or two or a handful of, of uh, domains redirecting to a money site, it is going to pass a certain amount of juice and probably a good amount. But if you start getting up there and you get 5, 10, 15, 20 redirects pointing to your money site, that's kind of a red flag. I don't think you're going to get necessarily get uh, pen penalized for that. But I do think that the uh, the juice is, is going to be affected, uh, so to speak, as far as what is transferred over to that. So with all that being said, I said that to say this, it is the safest and most natural method to put some content on the site and link to your money site. Absolutely. And you might want to take into account how long the domain has been expired. If it expired a week ago, then it's fresher in the search engine's eyes than one that might have expired three months ago. Because the dates for these websites are they're all going to be different. You know, some will have been expired a while and just left. Some are going to be very fresh. So you might want to take that into account as well. But, you know, content is content. And if it's already got some kind of juice and you refresh the site with content, then 
you know, you get some more search engine love. Uh, Felix is asking, is there a 30 day refund period? Yep, there is, uh, we, we offer a 30 day refund. Will is asking, what if we're primarily using this for traffic? Well, it's a good question. I'm not quite sure um, how to answer that because uh, it depends on what you mean by that. If you're using it for traffic, then you look for yeah. domains um, that look as if they're getting good traffic. And you might do that by looking in YouTube to see if the views are increasing. Bear in mind, by the way, that once you have this domain and it's linked to from various YouTube videos, there is nothing to stop you adding new videos to YouTube, linking back to that domain. You don't have to stop with just the ones that are already there. And you can even go further by putting comments on the videos that are existing. And you can refer to, uh, you know, your own videos and, and, you know, not spammy, but you can refer to them in a way that might draw more attention back to your own channel and on your own channel in the description links to these sites. So you can actually do a lot more than just buy a domain and put some content on there if you wish to. I'm not saying you have to, but there are so many different things you can do. I mean, we could be spending another couple of hours talking about it. We've already run over five minutes, which um, let's have a look. I don't think we're getting any more new questions, yeah. John. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, add to that quickly. I know you're, we're, we're wanting to finish off here, yeah. uh, but really one of the primary benefits now the, the direct traffic is kind of hit or miss some of them do some of them don't some of them have a great amount uh, some of them have none uh, but <clears throat> you're getting a head start you're getting a head start and so most of my future uh, niche sites and even authority sites are going to be on expired domains because we have such a powerful tool to find them and so it makes sense to use expired domains it's just you know you can start off with something brand new with no reputation, with no history whatsoever, and just work much harder to get to that point. Or you can get an expired domain that already has a bunch of solid links, that might even have some traffic, that has some authority, uh, that has a history, and you can start off you know, with a big head start. So that really is one of the, the biggest uh, values to this. You're gonna run into some of those golden nuggets that are just gonna instantly uh, send traffic your way. You're gonna have those that have just tons of solid backlinks that might even get you instant rankings. That is possible, it's a very real possibility. Some people are finding those and they are out there. Uh, but overall, uh, it's really gonna help you get a really good head start and there are people who built their business. There are million dollar businesses out there that are based on finding awesome expired domains. So Tube Snooper is such a valuable tool for all those who will really uh, think outside the box and find those golden nuggets and apply them to make money for their business. Which is easier to take over uh, a cookie store that already has the equipment but the owner left or build a brand new one, build the equipment yourself. You've already, as Josh says, you've got a head start and it's exactly the same. You've got, you've got a foundation to work on. And remember, after midnight tomorrow, so this is Friday the 13th, if you're watching the replay, it, it may already be Friday, um, after midnight, it's too late, that discount, that $200 discount is gone. And when you've made your purchase, please remember to click on where it says access product here, because then you can create your username, and your password and then you can log in immediately uh, if you need to you can use the split pay option $87 now $87 in August $87 in September but you get instant access immediately on the first payment you don't have to wait instant access uh, we'll put these links one more time in the chat box for you the replay email that's going out will have that for you as well sorry go ahead Josh Josh let me say one last thing about pricing as well uh, we do have plans we haven't uh, it's not in concrete yet. It's not a concrete uh, decision yet, but I'm pretty sure uh, we are going to, after launch, uh, switch this to a monthly model. We have overhead with this tool. We have uh, regular updates that we have planned and scheduled ongoing. And so uh, we are gonna have to start charging monthly. So for you right now, until midnight tomorrow, you have the opportunity to get this at a, either a one-time cost uh, the lifetime license or a three month lifetime uh, cost to where you're not paying monthly. Uh, worst case, you pay three months and then you're done paying and you have lifetime access. So get it now. If, if we're going to be promoting this in the future because it's an awesome tool, it's a long term tool, a lot of value in it. And six months from now, a year from now, it's not going to be a one time cost product. It's going to be a monthly 
uh, product. So keep that in mind and take advantage of this opportunity while, it's, while it lasts. Thanks for joining us, everybody. If you do have any follow-up questions, you can send them to us uh, and we'll try to answer them for you as quickly as possible. But remember, the clock is ticking. You've got uh, approximately 25 hours right now on the live webinar. If you're watching this on the replay, you could have a lot less time than that. Midnight, Friday the 13th, Eastern Standard, so New York time. Uh, if you're not sure where your local time zone is, just look what time it is in New York. A minute after midnight, that discount disappears. It's 397 then. And the split pay will disappear as well. So you've got to make your uh, choice as quickly as you can. Get in, start finding these great domains, and then uh, please let us know how you get on. And any questions, we'll answer them as quickly as we can for you when you send them through. So thanks again, and we hope to see you on the next one. Bye now.